when you fall down, you have to get back up. When is it gonna happen to me? It's hard to have patience. I mean, it is. If you really want it bad enough, you cannot skip steps. Be grateful for what you got. If you really want to get on that grind and you don't like your job, I'm still cooking the bacon. Because you're always going to be wondering what if. Damn, I'm only here for one reason and one reason only, though. Patience starts now. What's up, guys? How's everyone doing tonight? This is your co-host, Sammy G, alongside of Donnie D. And this is Patience, the podcast. Tonight, we have a very, very special episode for you all tonight. Donnie, how are you doing over there on the East Coast? You know, I'm feeling good. It is the end of the summer, so it's it's that time of year where people are really kind of unwinding, getting that last vacation in, you know, and I'm really feeling like, uh, like I'm ready for fall, man. I'm ready for that next, that next chapter. Donnie, I definitely understand that, my man. I definitely cannot wait for the winter. I want to skip fall. I want to go straight into the winter time, but you know what? Fall is nice too, and it gets me to the winter, so I'm going to be patient, and I'm going to be excited for the fall time as well but i will say i cannot wait until the winter we have so many great things planned but before we get to all of those great things i just want everyone to know tonight's topic for patience the podcast is finding purpose in the struggle on tonight's episode we don't have a special guest we we will be the special guest tonight and we will be going off the topic of finding purpose in the struggle Yeah, I think uh, people too often, they don't see the, the positive in this not knowing what's on the other end of maybe somebody who's feeling lost or trapped in some situation like a job or unfulfilled in some way, capacity in their relationships and, you know, in other areas of life that they're really looking for a little bit more meaning. So Sam and I have kind of been pondering on this idea and pontificating about how do people really, you know, ultimately go through the struggle and really discover the meaning behind the struggle? And I know that there isn't a person in the world who hasn't been through the struggle. There isn't somebody who hasn't had a moment in their life at some point trying to redefine and realign what that purpose is, what the struggle is really trying to like point them towards. I know, Sam, you've had a, you've had a pretty up and down it kind of last few weeks with your life i know that you're you know going through some things that i'm sure everybody can relate to and appreciate i definitely wanted to go ahead and like elaborate on the, on this topic and really help those people who don't feel good about themselves who don't feel who don't feel great about themselves or who aren't feeling very satisfied with how the future is going to turn out and and what are things going to be like. Just like you said, I have had a rough past few weeks, which has contributed to the lack of content we have been able to put out over the past few weeks. We are back on it, though. I think one of the few things, you know, more than the, the negativity or the negatives, you know, I won't focus on the negatives that are going on or that ha- that have happened in the past few weeks or that even has happened in the past, you know, years or a year and a half. What I will say is that, you know, we all come to speed bumps, maybe not stop signs, but there are speed bumps. So we're like, we're going through life, we're rolling, we're coasting, we're at 45 miles per hour, or we're at 50, 65 miles per hour, and speed limit is 45 or 50, and we're doing good, you know? And then all of a sudden we hit a fucking speed bump, man. And that speed bump, it just slows us down. I mean, it doesn't stop the car. It's not a curb, so you don't blow out a tire. It definitely slows you down, and you're definitely not gonna keep going 65 in the 45 anymore. Or if you do, you're going to be a lot more careful. It's the experience of hitting that that speed bump. And that's one of the main things I wanted to elaborate on and, and touch with are just people that are, like, going through speed bumps, man. People that are, like, coasting through life and, like, they just hit speed bumps. Or maybe they're at the red light, and the red light is, like, taking forever to turn. And 
you know, maybe it's one of those red lights that you got to get out and like push the button and then like it still doesn't turn green. You got to hop back in the car and you or you either got to just fucking pass up that red light and keep going or hopefully wait another two minutes and it's going to change for you. I wanted to try to motivate those, not just the doers today, because that's we have a lot of people who listen to this podcast that are motivated and are successful and are doing great things. And I, I love all of you guys. And, you know, I just, this is for my people who are still successful and motivated and are doers, but are just going through things. Um, finding purpose in the struggle. How and what do you do when you're going through some shit in your life and you don't know how it's gonna turn out, what you're gonna do to move on past it and who you're going to become after it it's a very scary situation you know when you don't know what's going to happen and i think we've all had moments in our life where we just don't know what's going to happen and we have to make a decision and we want to move forward and we want to do certain things and you can't get it done and i'm really just here to say like you know i wish everyone you know blessings i wish everyone hope you know, I think you guys got to have strength. I think I need to have strength. I think Donnie needs strength. I think we all need strength. And we all need focus. We talk so much about patience, but it's all about putting in the work too right now and focusing on right now. And I think if you're not focusing on right now, how are you going to be able to move into the future with something great, with something great to offer? There are many things that like a lot of people are going through in their life and you know i think it slows us down and i think we don't know where to go we don't know how to keep going on and you know what sometimes i don't know how to keep going on i find strength in knowing that like my purpose my purpose is greater than the struggle what if you don't know what your purpose is what if you don't know if how you feel is right I would say that you have to believe in yourself more than anyone and you have to not listen to any of your negative thoughts and you have to tell yourself every single day who you are even before you are that. If there's something that you would like to see, you got to think it and believe it first. I think that the, it first starts with changing your thought patterns and changing your actions. Donnie, what do you think? I honestly think that the struggle eventually turns into the ammunition that is your offense, that is your unique capacity to destroy everything in your path in terms of your goals, your ambitions. I think the struggle is what plants the seeds and turns into the firepower. So I, I really truly believe that, you know, as a topic, as we talk about, as the theme of the show is patience, there's a difference between waiting and patience. Patience really requires you to be consistent, disciplined. You know, it, it requires taking action on a daily basis. It requires understanding that the results may come 5, 3, 15, 10, 20 years down the road. But waiting is simply not enough. And waiting around and doing nothing isn't patience. Patience is about being resilient, going through those struggles, getting your face pushed into the dirt, but then you realize once you get up and you clean yourself up and you brush yourself off, that you're not gonna have to go through that again. And as, as a bonus, you're now gonna have an arsenal of weaponry to, to go ahead and attack that situation and make sure that it never puts you down again and make sure that you never find yourself in a situation like that again. So struggle, I think, is really the, the lifeblood of what turns into the wine in your life over time, it's just a matter of utilizing and pursuing and deploying patience and, and defining that. I think it's such an important part of living life through that struggle is understanding that while you're enduring that struggle, while you're getting your face knocked in, you hit the turnstile, you, you ran through a stop sign, you got stuck a little bit too long, you rushed past something a little bit too fast taking a moment and just really realizing that all of that is meant to lead you somewhere and that your job is to identify what's going on, how fast you're going, 
how fast you need to go. And that whole process, you know, really boils down to patience at the end of the day. So not having an easy time is probably the best thing that can happen to you because nothing good in life, as you've been told, is worth anything if it's easy. So if an opportunity comes along and it's not a instant gratification, instant blessing in my perspective. That is an opportunity that you are not going to appreciate when you're really feeling the pain from that and you're really feeling the struggle from that. But that's the best thing that can happen to you in that situation because you're going to come out of that particular rut that you're in and you're going to realize that's all I needed to go through to get to that next level. That's all I needed to go through to have an arsenal to protect myself and to rush into that next that next phase of my life with everything that I need. So I, I honestly don't think that, you know, struggle is a bad thing. I think a lot of people think mistakes are a bad thing. I think a lot of people assume that the, uh, the, the building blocks of success uh, don't come from making mistakes and don't come from struggle. But that is absolutely what every single one of the greats had to go through. We're not talking about just the Martin Luther Kings and the Mother Truthers. We're talking about the Steve Jobs. We're talking about the Richard Branson. We're talking about the Elon Musks or Nikola Tesla. These guys had to go through an immense amount of struggle before they could become historically great figures. Finding purpose in the struggle. Finding purpose in the struggle is today's topic. And I think a lot of times we ask the question, why me? Well, like, why? Why is it, why, why does this have to happen to me? Just a few weeks ago, when I was going, you know, fighting my battle, and then like, oh, of course I'll, whenever my battle is done, I will shed more light and shed more, shed more detail, but just so everyone knows, I'm still going through my battle. So eventually, once it's over with, you know, I would go ahead and shed more light into it all. But I remember Donnie telling me, he says, I don't know why this is supposed to happen, but I guess this is supposed to happen to you. You have to go through this. He said, I don't know why it's supposed to be happening to you. I guess you're supposed to go through this. You couldn't pay me a million dollars to believe that, <laughs> period. I wouldn't fucking believe that. Like, what do you mean? Why is this negative shit supposed to be happening to me? Why am I supposed to be facing negativity? And you know what? I heard something my mom told me the other day. She said, the devil won't touch anything that he already owns. You know, negativity isn't going to happen to people that are already in negativity, people that are, aren't going anywhere. Mm. And uh, she, she reminded me, and I want to remind everyone that, that's listening right now, that if you're going through something, just remember that negativity is not going to touch anybody that lives in negativity. So it's just a test. She, she, she reminded me, she, you, you have a special calling on, on, on your life. And there are, a, there are a lot of you that are going to listen to this podcast. And however you listen to this podcast, if you've gotten this far, almost to the 15-minute mark, you got a special calling on, on your life. There's a reason why you chose this podcast. There's a reason why you saw this and you have the time and you're not, you're not dead yet. You didn't die a month ago or a day ago or years ago. You know, there's a reason why your mom didn't abort you or whatever the case is, you know, and you got to this point. The devil doesn't touch anything that he already owns, anything. So that means, that means you may be wondering, well, like, why, why is this happening to me? All I do is good. All I do is try hard. All I want is success. All I want is to feed my family. All I want is to be the best that I can be. I don't wish anything negative on anybody. I don't do anything wrong to anybody. All I do is try to be the best that I can be. And you wonder why that is happening. And I just want to say, well, the devil doesn't touch anything that it already has his control of, anything that it has his grab. So you're looking at, at your friend or your homeboy or, or the stranger or whoever it is, and you may say, why like, why can't my life be like that? They, they never had that happen to them. They haven't had this happen to them. 
Well, it's because you're 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 destined for something more than them. You're you're destined for, for greatness. And that's what I had to also realize and, and remember that I'm destined for greatness and you are too. And we and most of us are. And most of us will never be able to understand that and see how we're gonna be able to get there. But just understand this that you're going through negative times. So the universe, God, life, whatever you believe in, can test you. If you said, if I had this, then everything will be okay, and I'll be fine, and I won't complain anymore. Well, life, the universe heard you, God heard you, and it's going to test you, and it's going to say, okay, we'll see about that. And it's just testing you, you know? So, like, right now, I'm, like, I'm going through that battle where life is just testing me. But it just really wants to see if I really want it. You know, it wants to see if, if my head is in the game. And sometimes we go into things like a relationship, like a friendship, a new job, um, a birthday party, obligations that, that we promise people, right? It's easy to say, like, of course, I'll be there for you, or yes, I'll do this. And then it comes time to do everything, you're like, oh, fuck, this isn't what I expected. You know, but now you got to live up to it. If you're destined for something great, then you're gonna get there. And all of the little things that it takes to get there are gonna be building blocks and they're, they're just gonna be stairs to elevate you. Because without all the experiences that you have that are negative, you will never be able to get there. Sam, do you remember your first, the first interaction the first time in your life where you, where you really felt like the universe, you know, the, the God that you prescribe to, whatever your particular religious affiliation is or your identity with the creator, do you remember that first time when like, you really felt like there was a challenge or a struggle or something, some audacious event that really shook you up that made you realize something is trying to test me and something is trying to get my attention. I remember... I was living in Israel when I was in high school, in my senior year in high school. Oh no, this is actually my freshman year at college in Israel. And I, I was supposed to be going to class on a Sunday. They have classes on a Sunday over there. And this was the only time I've ever slept in and missed a day as an American student living in Israel, like on an international like education program where they go to school on a Sunday and I slept in and then missed my train to go to Tel Aviv to go to class. And on that morning, there was, a, there was an explosion. There was a, a terrorist attack on my train at the exact hour I was gonna get off the train at the exact station that I, that I get on to go to class. And that was the moment where I really just realized like something, something in the universe, something in the world is giving me a call to action. I was way too young and way too naive to really understand what it was. But do you remember a time like that in your life where you just felt like the entire like earth force, the entire universe, like something, some one cataclysmic event happened to you and you just remember it trying to grab your attention and just try to shake you up completely shatter your world and break whatever cycle you're in. One of those early moments for me like really got my attention and I think I just failed to miss what that message was. Do you remember a time like that for you in your life? My mother was in the military and we ended up becoming homeless. And my mother spent years in the military, you know? Hmm. And uh, we lived in this house. Beautiful home, beautiful neighborhood. At this point, I maybe was like 11 years old, and this when I first started rapping. I met these guys, we had a lake behind the house, I met these guys at, at the lake. For some reason, I was able to connect with them, and they said, you know, um, they're, they happen to be smoking weed. And they were like, we can't hang out with you right now because we smoking weed, you're too young, but you definitely seem chill. We got a studio. I'm like, okay, dope, y'all Yo, got a studio? I rap, of course, they're like, yeah, 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 of course you rap, sure. And 
I remember getting a call from one of them. I took their numbers down. I left the lake because they said I couldn't hang out with them while they were smoking weed. I was like, okay, that's fine. And I get a call and I'm about to play a basketball game. And they called me and they say, come over. I call my mom. I'm saying, come get me from this basketball game. I want to go back home. I'm about to be able to like rap in this studio that they had. They had like they had like a little home studio inside the closet. These like seniors in high school. So my mom comes and picks me up. We head back over. I built a relationship with them guys. They love me. From there, we got kicked out of that house. I remember when I got inside my mom's truck and I could barely get into the front, to the front, like seat of the door. She 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 texts me and says she's picking me up from, from school. She never picks me up from school. I always take the bus home. And I take, you know, I, I hop inside of her Lexus truck and uh, I could barely squeeze in there because of all of our stuff was inside of her truck. I remember it. I, I remember looking over my shoulder and I seen my Xbox 360. You know, at that point, I'm like, oh, damn, this is <laughs> this is for real. You know, I, like I got my own gaming council in here. This is this is legit. Wherever I think I'm going, I'm not going. You know, and she never let me. She never let me. I never went back to that neighborhood. She never let me see. She never let me and my little brother see the house, that house again, period. So I never I, I don't I don't know what happened to any of the furniture, any of our beds, anything like. All I just remember is seeing anything. It looked like any and everything she could grab that was ours was inside that truck. And that's all we had. And I remember being so angry. Not angry that we got kicked out. But angry. Really, I didn't even know that we got kicked out. You know, but just knowing, like, not angry that, like, I'm not about to go back to that house. But angry knowing that, like, you know, music was my calling, feeling like I love music and I couldn't go back and see those guys. I didn't know how I was going to see those guys again and how I was going to go record that music again. So I was so angry and we moved into these apartments and they were hood as fuck. And I wasn't even angry about that. I was just angry about like, man, what am I going to do? How am I going to ever be a rapper? How am I going to ever make music? And then we ended up moving out of those apartments into a whole another apartments. And I started smoking weed at a very young age. And I happened to be smoking weed outside somebody's apartment. And one of my mentors, one of my very first mentors was like, hey, what y'all doing? Don't be smoking weed out here. Come inside my apartment and we can kick it. You know, I don't want you smoking weed outside my apartment though. And from there, I didn't know, I didn't, you know, I was just lost. I was just in a daze. I was just going through times of wanting to take care of my little brother and wanting to be the best that I can be. And like, didn't know what I was gonna eat. We didn't eat breakfast unless it was at school. And like, whatever it was at school, I'm gonna eat it all because I know I'm probably not gonna eat that much later on. And this is when like Little Caesars had their pizzas for like five dollars and thirty-five cents. That's it. It was five dollars and thirty-five cents, bro. And we would go. I would go. I would walk because the Little Caesars was like close enough for, for me to walk. I could walk through like a bunch of the apartment complexes and jump fences and stuff. And I could go get that pizza and I could walk back. And then me and my little brother would eat that like every day, you know, for like weeks on end. And I remember my first mentor asked me to come in and his girlfriend was just ragging on me, ragging, ragging, ragging on me. Like, what the fuck? Like, what are y'all doing out here? Like, you, I, I was hanging out with, with like a 16-year-old. I happened to be like 13. And it was like, and you, you're not going to be anything if you keep smoking weed, is what she said. And I said, actually, you know, I make music and I'm on the honor roll. And I went off on her. And he said, you make music? I'm thinking that the guy's about to go off on me. I don't know him from nothing. You know, that's that's my first 15 minutes of meeting this guy. He said, you make music? I said, yeah, I make music. Fuck y'all. And he said, come back here. I'm thinking I'm about to get my ass beat or who knows what. And he has a studio. And from there, I rap, I freestyle, 
And that guy told me, he said, whenever you see any of my cars here, you're more than welcome to come in here and, and, and record and rap. And he taught me all of the basis of everything that I know right now. And I like to think that that was God. I like to think that, that was like the universe looking out for me, like that was life looking out for me because I was a pl I, I was in somewhere where like I knew these people but barely knew them, and then we got kicked out, and then we moved to a whole another place. I didn't know how it, how it was gonna happen, and then I was able to like you know be back in the studio. I was able to meet someone like instantly, and it really like clicked. It, it clicked to me because I was like, oh yeah, this is definitely what I'm supposed to be doing because there's no reason why, there's no reason why another person has a studio and is willing to like, and then like, like likes me at 13, at 12, 13, and fucks with me. You know, this guy's 25, 28, you know? And so I always knew like after that, I was like, all right, bitch, I'm special. I was like, I'm special. I was like, I don't know why. I was like, I, I don't know why I'm special. But I knew I was special, and I knew that God was looking out for me. And from there, it, I stay focused on the goal, bro. And the rest is history. The thing is that we don't we don't really control anything. Like none of this is in our control. But everything that you do is based on your response to life. And when you're faced with that challenge. When you're faced with that situation that you're not really sure what to do, I think that's really the true definition of your character. That is truly who you are in that moment of, oh shit. What you do after that oh shit moment is exactly who you're gonna be. When you're faced with that, just recognize that it's an opportunity for you. That struggle is an opportunity for you. That bridge that you might see as a wall is an opportunity for you. You know, that ledge that you might see an endless amount of falling into a pit of who knows what might be an opportunity for you. So I just think it's, it's so important to just uh, be aware that nothing that you think you control, you actually control, except for your response, except for your perspective. And if your attitude is in the right place, if you have an objective in life, or if you're lost and you don't quite know the, the meaning or the purpose of what you're doing and why you're doing it, take a look around and listen to what's going on around you. Be perceptive. Don't take on other people's perceptions of what you should be doing. Don't worry about what other people are thinking or saying about you. Don't be overly concerned or hyper-focused with what the news is saying or who's president or what's going on with your academic or your actual career. Just pay attention to what it is that makes you happy and have the foresight and the perspective to be honest about what your responsibilities are, what your goals are, whether you have a plan or not have a plan, don't have a plan, be honest about that. But just be aware, just really listen to yourself, just really listen to your environment. Pay attention to those tiny nuanced details because meaning is not gonna fucking pop up in your lap. Purpose is not just gonna show up in your life. You're gonna have to go through struggle first. You're gonna have to learn the hard way. Whether your perspective is in the right place or the wrong place, you're gonna have to figure out exactly whether your parents code, whether your friends code, your community, your religions code, their perspective is your perspective or your own perspective is your own perspective and to be able to overcome that hurdle and the ability to respond in the way that you feel is the right way for you truly right for you you might be able to start beginning the process of cultivating what purpose might look like or meaning might look like in your life but most people ignore these calls most people look the other way. Most people trust their parents because their parents have the best intentions for them or they trust their community or they truly put their lives into the hands of their religion. But God yeah. or the universe wants you to react in the way that you were built to react to those situations and to be honest yeah. about what 
is your truth and to speak that truth into your life. I didn't know how I was going to do it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know how I was going to do it. I bet my mom didn't know how she was going to do it. You know, looking back, I know a lot of people didn't know how they was going to do it, you know? And even being right now, I don't know how I'm going to do it. Revel in that. Love that moment. But just like Donnie said, there's going to be, you're going to come, a, there's a choice in your life where you are going to have to make a decision and you just don't know what to do, which way to go, which role to turn on. But you will still have to make a decision even if it means not making a decision. And that will be who you are in that moment. That will show who you are. I wish there was a drink, a type of medicine, a shot, um, something that everyone could take easily to know who they were and truly know who they were, but there isn't. What I will say is feeling sorry for yourself won't change anything. Nope. And doing the same shit that got you into the first mistake won't change anything. Not even a little. So you gotta try in some shape or form of changing your mindset and I know you've been a shitty person because we all have, right? But maybe you've been a lot more shitty because you actually think that. So you gotta change yourself. You have to change your belief in your mindset about who you are. The first step is to know that you're not a shitty person. The first step is to say, I am great. I am proud of myself. I am more than what the world knows. I am not my mistakes. And I truly believe that about anybody. I think if you're willing to stand up and you're willing to own and accept your mistakes and anything that may have led you down the wrong path and you're willing to own it, but you're willing to say, I am not that. That is not of me. I may have done that, but that is not who I am now. And the funny thing is people try to put you in a box. People try to put me in a box all the time. People think just because they knew me when whatever, you know, or like they knew me when I was smoking weed. I don't even smoke weed anymore, guys. People think that they know me from my, from my past decisions, but they don't. If you wouldn't do it again, then that's not who you are. It's scientifically proven we have different living cells, different organisms. We are a living body. We are created anew. So like when you get a scab or when you bleed out, your cells will work hard and it will rebuild you. You are literally not the same person that you were three years ago. Everything about you is different and it's brand new. And... I think the most important thing is you have to focus on you because everybody is going to always only want to see the negative in you. They only want to see what they remember in you. And if they can't forget it, then that's on them. Let them live in the past. You live in the now. So all my people that are going through some shit right now, let's find power. Let's find purpose in the struggle. Because there is a purpose in the struggle. And you don't always see it when you're going through the struggle. But this is why Patience of the Podcast is here. This is why Sammy G is here. This is why Donnie D is here. 
we are here to influence you guys we're here to give you a higher level of thinking we are here to encourage you guys we're here to create value for you and we want to help you let's find purpose in the struggle i don't know what that purpose will be for you I don't know what you need to see. I don't know what's changing and what's gonna be on your side and what's gonna make it all make sense to you. But let's try to find it. Let's find purpose in the struggle. And it starts with you, only you. Only you can look at your situation and find purpose in the struggle. Only you can find the positivity and the negative. Only you can find happiness and the sadness. Only you can find motivation when there's no reason to keep on going. Only you can find hustle when you're tired. Only you can continue to work when you don't want to go anymore. Only you can love when so many people hate. Only you. I wish you all the blessings. I wish you all the love. I wish you all the motivation. I wish you all the care in the world that my higher power, that the universe, that life, that God, that any other source of being out there can provide for you so that one day you can and that you may understand that there is purpose in the struggle. Donnie, do you have any last words? If anyone out there is listening to Patience Podcast right now and feels like they identify with just being a mom or just being a lawyer or just being a dad or just being a teacher as the purpose and the meaning in their life, I urge you, I challenge you to truly reach deep down and find out who you are outside of a mother, a father, a lawyer, a teacher an engineer try to really tap into the purpose of what your true gift is of what your contribution is to just challenge everything you've ever thought you wanted if you've already achieved that to continue pursuing that life to continue pursuing everything that makes your family happy and meeting your career goals and all your financial goals. But to take some time, a lot, some moment of meditation during your week this week and try to explore the side of you that isn't completely entrapped by everything you have to do, everything that you have to meet deadline-wise every responsibility you have to accommodate and fulfill. And truly identify yourself outside of your family, your socioeconomic, your religion, your gender, your race, any of those walls, those boxes that you find yourself in. Just just listen. Whether you're meditating, whether you're just being honest, you know, in in a five-minute period, of one day or you know one day a week just taking some time for yourself and figure out what it is that makes you really tick please do that because patience the podcast wants you to take the time to really figure out what matters to you in your life the most what really truly brings you the most fulfillment what truly makes you happy yes that's what me and sammy g are all about this is what we want people to really tap into explore further so you know on this special late night edition we just want to thank you guys for joining us tonight we want to thank you for listening in sometimes bad things happen to good people i don't know why life is not fair <laughs> that is the reality Disease and accidents don't care if their victim is a good person. They have no reason, no justification, and no mercy. And even the best person you know can end up in the clutches of evil. And you cannot stop it. So what do you do? Are you going to get angry? Frustrated? 
Are you going to lash out at people? Who are you going to lash out at? Who are you going to start going down the spiral of negativity? Are you going to let the horrible situation dictate the way you feel and the way you handle it? Are you going to fall over, fall down, fall apart? Or are you going to lead? Are you going to face this issue with courage and with resolution? I say lead. Lead. Step up. Be the one who people look to. Absorb the impact and the negativity. Draw fire. Yes, draw fire. That's when a member of a platoon, for tactical reasons, steps into the open to draw enemy fire. Maybe to give another part of the team a chance to move. Maybe to distract the enemy. Maybe to help the platoon locate the enemy. But that's what I say, draw fire. Bring that pain to me. I can handle it when others cannot. When bad things are happening, I will be the one good thing. Standing tall, that can be relied upon. I will bolster those around me and a positive attitude will spread and we will fight. And in fighting, we will win. If not the battle, and if not the war, we will win because our spirit will never surrender. And that is the ultimate victory, to hold your head high and even in the face of inescapable defeat, to stand and fight. This was Patience the Podcast, Finding Purpose in the Struggle. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Me and Donnie Debo love you very much. Have a great night.